Today I'm looking at Contact 8, which just got released, of course, with all the other uh, combined packages, Complete 15. And because I had Complete 14, I got the upgrade price for 199 to get Complete 15 standard. And Contact, which costs $99, upgrade if you own contact 7 i thought let's spend the other 100 and they threw in ozone 11 standard and a couple of different instruments so more about that later i loaded contact 7 and 8 as a standalone as you can see and i compared actually the memory load on my uh, cpu by using the task manager and here is the information contact 7 on first start without any instruments loads at around 228.9 230 megabyte now in comparison contact 8 as you can see uh, comes in already with uh, 326 megabyte so a little bit larger because there is more built into the engine itself so let's look into that it's pretty much the same interface. It's scalable, so you can, which I like a lot, you can, if you have a large screen, you can pull it all the way out if you want, up to you. Contact 7 only showed you brand, sound types, and character, right? So you can browse through, you know, your different sounds, what you have, also all the presets over here. Um, in 8 now, they have those new tabs here, and this is called combined, because now you can actually combine sounds pretty fast. They have a tools page, which a uh, tools tab, excuse me, the tools tab now, which includes chords and phrases, which is interesting. They got the leap um, expansion that lets you play ready to go kits. Uh, this one came with it, I guess, lo fi vibes. So I have to check that out later. Uh, then it came, of course, with a complete loop section, loop samples that you combine and play. And I'm sure you can drag them later into your DAW as well. So I, I will do this in a separate video, how Contact 8 behaves in Cubase 13. And we have one shots. Those are, you know, single, I guess, sample hits. You can combine and play in Leap and other instruments. So you can drag them over to Leap and create your own kits, I guess. So that's uh, 7 and 8. And again, it uses a little more RAM. Uh, but in general, I think uh, so far it's been stable. I haven't had any crashes yet. And so knock on wood and let's dive in a little deeper into Contact 8, especially the new tools. I want to really check out the chords and the phrases. All right, so let's look at that first new tool. Uh, I'm going to have another video looking at the second one. So this is the chords tool. And if you click the tools tab, you get to those two options and you can audition actually the chord progressions. So pretty much each key on your keyboard, like three octaves has, uh, you know, chords assigned. You guys know this maybe from uh, the Cubase uh, chord track or Scalar, the plugin Scalar 2 is really nice too. A lot of flexibility there. So here we can just audition our progressions. And if you like something, you double click it and the tools, the chords tool, I can need to get used to this. The chords tool will be loaded in the upper frame. And if you play, uh, you see the keyboard layout down here. If you play, let's say the middle C, there's no sound. Why? Because we haven't assigned an instrument yet to play the chords. So under instruments here, you click the plus sign and in your uh, selection of your plugins, you can pick uh, whatever you want to pick here, whatever you have. Let's try the piano, Maverick. Let's go for the basic Maverick right now, which comes with, by the way, complete 15. So here's Maverick. And now if I hit the individual notes, and I down on the octave. And it explains to you that the uh, chord currently, and you can see how it, the layout, the voicing is of the chord. So this is a G minor at 11, B flat 9. So you can get really creative. One thing that's different in comparison to Scalar, you have a immediate strum 
uh, dial here. So if I increase that, you can see how the graphics change. And now we have a little arpeggio, also the other direction here. And you can determine how quick. So if you load in, for instance, a, a, a harp or guitar a sample, you can have, you know, your strumming really controlled if you just want some chords to ring with your track or something like that. You can also change the octave, have a humanized uh, dial. Uh, and under in this wheel up here, the options, you can go to advanced mode and uh, turn on and off the chord names if that bothers you, things like that. So here's the interesting part about this Contact 8 system now. You can add a second instrument immediately. You don't need to open a multi, you know, one contact instance, uh, make it uh, add a second one inside there and assign the ports. It's all automatic now. You just click the plus button and let's go down or up better. I say up in my collection. I go to the CS Cinematic Studio Strings. Let's pick the light ensemble. And you can hear it gives you actually uh, immediate sample how this library sounds. So you double click it and it's going to load it underneath my Maverick. Let's make this a little, okay, extend that. So now I have the strings, sustain, and the Maverick playing. Let's get rid of the strum for now. Uh, if I hit the chords, all right, I don't know why it's staying over. Is there a pedal going? Let me see. No. And because the strings are controlled by the mod wheel, you know, the dynamics, I can bring them in. Okay, no hanging note. This is a little weird. Maybe it's a bug. Let's find out. If this... this is interesting, right? I don't know if it's a bug. Let's, let's switch that. actually nice sounds really good e flat minor 11 with the strings that's too murky let me be up here Yeah, so you can see immediately you can create some textures without, you know, too much thinking of the ports like in Contact 7. You know, we could make multis and we all done, we have all done our multis. And you can just add as many instruments as your engine can handle uh, to, to this setup and then you can save it. And uh, again, this is a very fast tool. It's very simple. Uh, Scalar, way more complex, can do more things. But this, for basic stuff, I like it actually. It's very simple. And as you could, could hear, if you just want a string arpeggio with some, uh, you know, piano and strings, and you do a little volume with that, nice. Immediately you can use that, right? So so that's about the chords tool. I'm going to delve dive more into it uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, maybe read the manual. There's also, as you can see, a little dice. So when you roll the dice, the chords going to change. So you can actually have the engine try stuff that might inspire you, or you just go through the, the presets, right? And see what they do. Others are pretty basic. And you can also do an instant mix. The, uh, here you see the two instruments. And here's the, the panning. And here is your volume. So if you think uh, the strings are already too loud, you know, just move them down. Right? So very quick, easily, you can create something I think pretty fast here in Contact 8. It's been running stable, except that hanging MIDI node. So let's find out if you guys also encounter that. Please let me know if that's just on my keyboard. Maybe uh, MIDI signal gets sent the wrong way, but I hope not. Everything else been moving, uh, has been working great. So uh, this is the chords tool. I'm looking at the other um, tool in the next video. So see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.